Assalamu alaikum. Thanks for coming back to my house, guys. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's an honor for us to be invited to your house. Yeah, yes. it's lovely house. Yeah. It's good food. <laughs> <laughs> really good food. Um, the brother here, Abdurrahman, is a little bit of a poet. I say a little bit. You'll see why. <laughs> <laughs> but he wrote a poem on, on yeah, our, our topic, uh, marriage. So you want, you want to hit that off for the people? Yeah, of course. So, uh, actually, I start like this. There are three main values that we could only fully detect in an Islamic marriage, which is responsibility, love, and respect. And as we all know, Islam is about a way of life. Therefore, the Prophet, peace be upon him, also showed how a husband should treat his wife and how he should be sweet to her and her family so that love, even though the up and downs, remains strong and grows rapidly. In fact, a happy home is found in Islam, not in a fiction or a spell like Al-Kazam. <laughs> the Prophet, peace be upon him, even helped his wife in the housework. And it was said in a hadith, which even made some women in the West nowadays convert. Mm -hmm. Now, I was general and simple, but I hope viewers could reach progress progressively a detailed description of Islamic marriage through the Sheikh Wise speech. <laughs> this is very exciting. That, that's okay, very I'll take nice. that back a little. He's a, he's a, maybe a, a better poet than I gave him credit for. <laughs> the problem is that he, he mentioned about the housework. No, my wife is going to pound me. What are you going to do about the housework? That's coming later, inshallah. <laughs> I'll be, yeah, that, that'll be at someone else's house. I won't be here. Uh, but today we're, we're going to uh, talk more on marriage because the brother, Alhamdulillah, is still thinking about getting married. Nobody's scared of getting married. No one's scared him off yet with the realities of marriage. So I think a good place for us to start would be standing at the doorstep of trying to pick a spouse. Exactly. Uh, actually, most of the marriage problems, when we cancel marriage problems, we found that, that they were resulted due to the wrong choice from the beginning. People make the wrong choice, the wrong selection based on what you just mentioned, fiction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're deceived with the beauty, with the wealth. Mm -hmm. And accordingly, they make their own choice. They you end up paying the price. Choice. As how many uh, girls get married to uh, uh, boys or men just because they were rich or handsome, or they liked his car. That's exactly. What we're we facing now, in yeah, the world right now. Exactly. Or uh, his job, the way he <laughs> ties his tie the way he dresses his suit and so on. The way he besides, on <laughs> yeah, besides that, they don't even try to discover his personality, his manners, his attitude, how he deals with others and it's so his on. His religion. <laughs> you know, set aside religion because, you know, in, in many cases, uh, unfortunately, even some of the Muslim societies, religion has become the farthest thing from the mind in respect of, uh, you know, choosing your life mate, uh, choosing even a good candidate for your daughter, for your sister, or for a person who's under your guardianship. Do you think it's right that, they, you know, when a person wants to choose such a wife, mostly they look at their parents first, the, the wife's side, parents, look at the mother, how the mother grows, how fertile she has, how many children she has that, that, that give, and how she educate her, how she educate the families, and that will be... Exactly right, yeah. because this is, uh, actually, that should be one of the factors based on you, you make the choice, because, you know, uh, I personally <coughs> keep saying that you don't only marry to the girl. You marry to the family. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Mm. And uh, <laughs> who's going to be the uncles of your children? Yes, yes. You know, you're not going to cut her off and say, yeah, she's good, and, and the family uh, are not. No. So it's very important to consider the entire package, the girl and the family. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just thinking to myself. <laughs> well, we, we are now coming, coming to the end of the uh, Zaman, yani, where you find that some in some of the families that women are, the child in, convert themselves into uh, totally pious into their way of Islam, but their parents are not. Yani, so That's like, actually true as well. It's another word. <laughs> you see, for a person who is religiously committed, 
he adopts the Quran and the Sunnah as the way of his and her life. So they do not make any choice, but after they consider what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, instructed them with putting guidelines as how to make that choice. When it comes to marriage, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In this magnificent area of Surah al nur Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us saying that and marry those amongst you who are single, <laughs> males and females. Was mm -hmm. and the pious ones of the male slaves and the female ones. Guess what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the most important qualification at al-salihin. Righteous. Pious, pious and righteous. Okay. And he emphasized on the fact that sometimes righteousness contradicts with wealth by the meaning. Uh, you know, not necessarily every righteous person will be, be free. <laughs> <laughs> will be rich or financially capable. As a matter of fact, it is the opposite. <laughs> so he says, <laughs> if they be poor, Allah will enrich them out of his bounty. And Allah indeed is sufficient for all the needs, all aware of all the needs of his creatures. So there, the only factor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes on in this ayah, in selecting your life mate, is righteousness. righteousness. Mm -hmm. And what people keep running after, which is wealth, luxury, Money, dunya, dunya, beauty. Dunya. He says, no, it's not necessarily beauty. You know, beauty also. The, the the most important factor. It could be actually a calamity. <laughs> and he recommends for us: is if a person is righteous, meanwhile he or she is poor, so what? Allah me. is the one who gives wealth and tests others with poverty. If they be poor, Allah will enrich them out of His bounty. That reminds me of a hadith with the. Mm -hmm. the fathers should be more into giving their daughters to men who are pious in their religion True. than to, uh, I need a doctor from Hyperbad who, you know, is from this, you know what I'm saying? It must be reading the Horizon magazine. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I think Abdurrahman here is searching for Khadija. Khadija, uh, Aisha, <laughs> yeah, Khadija, uh, Aisha. No. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam married uh, Zayd ibn Haritha and he was a slave. <laughs> to his cousin Zainab in Tijahsh, and she's mm -hmm. from a very honorable family, mm -hmm. the family of the Prophet mm -hmm. uh, Not only that, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, may Allah be pleased with him, and he was one of the richest companions, Abdul Rahman mm -hmm. ibn Awf. He married his sister, to who? To Bilal ibn Rabah. <laughs> to Bilal ibn Rabah. The freed slave. The, the <laughs> black freed Abyssinian slave, mm -hmm. and so forth. There are so many examples, just beyond count. Mm -hmm. But when people have the concept of the religious commitment as a priority, mm -hmm. they make the right choice. Like Omar ibn Khattab exactly. and the, the milkmaid. The it, Prophet sallallahu says, إِذَا جَاءَكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَأَمَانَتَهُ فَزَوْجُهُ If one approaches you in respect of marrying to your girls, mm -hmm. whom you trust his religion, religion and honesty, mm -hmm. then marry him to your girl. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, there is a threat. Mm -hmm. There will be a corruption and mischief, and that will be spread all over the earth. Wow. <laughs> you know, we're and I guess <laughs> that's happening. The only difference. That reminds me of my good friend Bilal Abdul Karim, who uh, that's his uh, favorite ayah of the Quran, because uh, all the race issues we have in the States mm -hmm. uh, with, you know, this and that and that. He said when he heard that, he knew that it had to be from the Lord from the Lord of creation because it said the only thing that I care about is your piety yes so the only thing we should care about when we look for our husbands for our daughters no. our wives for ourselves Allah is will not their see piety. our skin and you're not seeing our skin to see our heart 
I see Abdul Rahman is very concerned. He's about to make a very, very important decision. <laughs> Well, he's still the boat <laughs> on, on the port side. We but I'm glad you're considering that before making the choice, you know. I mean, I believe uh, beauty, whatever there is materialistic, beauty for a woman or money for a man or a woman, and all these kind of stuff, they don't last. Therefore, Islam, when, it's, when you choose based on Islam, it's based on Allah. So it's based on something that lasts forever something that can never die for generations so that's why i think it's really important to choose on on that kind of values islam values and not uh, materialistic or illusionary well, you know you know to marry a woman exactly you know abdul rahman it's yes. very very important to know that we're not ignoring the other factors beauty lineage exactly. family position wealth no as a matter of fact the prophet sallallahu says in the sound hadith a woman may be married for one of four reasons. Beauty is one of it. Yeah. For her beauty. wealth. Yeah. For her lineage. Yeah. For her beauty. And for, and for her deen. deen. And then he emphasized on the importance of selecting the one has deen. who has, has deen. A religious commitment. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, we'll meet you again. <laughs>
the qualities of uh, the person who's pursuing his girl. Once the Prophet وسلم, was sitting and a man passed by. So the Prophet وسلم, asked his companions, what do you think of this man? They said, such a person, if he pursues any girl in marriage, nobody would give him his daughter. And if he would ever intercede, nobody would accept his intercession. So the Prophet ﷺ kept quiet, no comment. After a little while, somebody else passed by. So the Prophet ﷺ asked them the same question concerning this little man, saying that, what do you think of this man? said, He's such a person that if he would uh, pursue any girl in marriage, her family would love to give him the girl. And if he would ever intercede, people would accept his intercession with pleasure. So the Prophet ﷺ made a very important comment saying that the first one, the earlier one, is better than the fullness of earth of the later one. <laughs> Meaning, uh, that's a big difference. Meaning, <laughs> Meaning yes. before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the first one, whom people considered insignificant, they, would even, uh, they wouldn't even uh, accept his intercession. They wouldn't consider giving him their daughter. Mm -hmm. So before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's much more superior. And he's better than the fullness of earth of people like the later one. So if we, have, if we have already seen all this, the uh, attributes that this girl has, for example, if it's Abdurrahman's interest in what he would do for the next step, where he wants to go to meet the parents first before he, he could resemble seeing the girls, things like that. Oh, you're talking about engagement. Yeah. No, wanna, congratulations. Wanna... You already made up your mind. <laughs> I, I want to ask one no, question real fast. Sure. Is there a point where you become too picky? you know, on these four things. Like, the religion thing is nice, but is there a point where you say, well, if she's not praying 10 Jews of Quran at night, then I'm not going <laughs> to marry her? Or if she's not, you know, the most beautiful woman I've ever seen, then I'm not going to marry Is there a point where you become too picky? Well, yes, Ismail. Number one, no one is perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not what? perfect. <laughs> no one is perfect. Okay. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So trying to find somebody who has the four qualities and in the most perfect manner, you're going to wait forever to not yeah. get married. You will never get married. No. You know? You'll be fasting all the time. So you have to compromise, but Very never honest. compromise on the account of the religious commitment. Mm -hmm. That is the thing which lasts. Earlier, Abdul Rahman was sharing with me a story of a person uh, who lives in Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, if you wish to share it with the brothers. Actually, to, to add a, a, the point that when, when someone like shoes according to only materialistic, non-lasting values, it, it goes in the end and it doesn't succeed. And uh, I had an example in Canada, there was this uh, guy that, who, who had even fame in the neighborhood. He was, he was uh, a bodybuilder, he looked good, he had a wonderful, beautiful wife, and he had a motorbike. So one day he did, he did an accident. He became like uh, paraplegic or whatnot. Yeah, and of course uh, he got really uh, injured and it affected on his beauty. He became someone else. Mm -hmm. From that moment, his wife left him. Mm -hmm. So that? basically there was no love. All what they say, Romeo and Juliet and those fairy tales, this is not love. True, is, true love is, in, uh, is seen and described by Islam. Well, it's sad to hear that, Abdurrahman, Abdul Rahman, but unfortunately, it is true. Uh, this is a natural result of marrying just for materialistic reasons. Even in English, they say that a friend in need is a friend indeed. Exactly. What about exactly. a wife, a wife that abandons her husband or a husband who abandons his wife because of, you know, the reason which they got married for is gone. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So the thing which is most likely to last as long mm -hmm. as they're alive, which is the religious commitment. Yeah. Helping each other to be righteous, uh, you know, couples. Slaves to Allah. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. That lasts, but beauty does not. Wealth does not. <laughs> no, beauty fades, yeah. believe me. Yeah. I looked at myself in the other day and I said, what, what happened to you? And like we said, it's, it's, it's also a mixture. Like the most important thing is religion. But 
we don't mind the other things, depending it's on the It's not only we don't if mind, you, it's, 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 it's commended. It's kind of, yeah. If you can find but, a pretty religious girl, you, know, I got, yeah, you can give her this nice. number. <laughs> if the <laughs> Prophet <laughs> says that, whenever you make up your mind and you're ready to get married and you decide about the girl, onzur ilayha, look, at, look her. at her. That's most likely to make you live a happy life after yeah, get along. Because you in, exactly long, get in along and you're convinced. Exactly. You know, you're convinced. Exactly. Versus yeah. a person who describes for you or give you a picture or a photo, then you make up your mind based on uh, like something internet. different than the reality. <laughs> like an internet marriage. Well, yeah. psychologically, is that it helps you too because if you have a nice wife, nice face, things like that, then you come back home stressed up. Mm -hmm. They're the only people who really calms you down, mm -hmm. uh, motivate you, and they are, they are your personal partner that motivates exactly. you for your goals, for every goal that you want to go in, in the hereafter and also in this book. You know, talking about looking at so on, uh, we should really keep in mind that there are uh, etiquettes of looking, you know? Mm -hmm. Because uh, others might imagine that it's okay to date a girl and to go out with her, and, you know, especially if we live in the worst, you know. I didn't do anything, I was just looking. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just an innocent meeting, we just had it's coffee like or ice cream. No. It's like a car you know, shopping. Uh, any mm -hmm. meeting of those meetings, of those kind of gatherings, has to be in the presence of the mahram, of the girl. Mm -hmm. In her family, uh, you know, with... Not uh, behind the curtain. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, otherwise just uh, taking her in, in, in private and going out and uh, driving her away from home and so on, this is all known as uh, uh, mixing up um, men and women together, which is prohibited. Oh, it's, happening know, without a it's happening now. It's happening now. It's happening in the East yeah. also. No. Yeah, yeah, I was at McDonald's the other day and it was full of, yeah, I call them Yahabibis. Oh. You know, just my <laughs> beloved, my <laughs> beloved, <laughs> just, you know. <laughs> you know, there is an Arabic statement which says, Al Mamluk Mamlul. Once you have it in hand, uh, you feel bored of it. By the meaning, when a person dates a girl and they go out, uh, his excuse and her excuse that we're studying each other will become like you know in the Western societies they live together. Yeah. You know I, I might have told you this story before, Ismail. <laughs> uh, that uh, that man after eight years and four kids, they finally decided to get married because they got to know each other. Eight I'm years. Busting. This is how much it took them. <laughs> There's uh, eight years, four kids, two mortgages, and they had a car <laughs> payment, and then we decided we, we loved uh, each other. Eight years in in adultery, you know. So in Islam is all about modesty. So let's say that and assume it didn't work out. Nothing have happened. That you came and visited an innocent visit. You did not even get to touch her. All you had was some tea. Exactly. Well, even <laughs> after you have already engaged her officially, you still do not get the chance or the, the, the right to check hands with her and so to touch her what or can sit you with her in at? private. What can you look at? What well, is acceptable to look at? I'm not saying you go and you do, hey, baby, hey. <laughs> but what is acceptable like when you're with her? Her father and her mother and you, what is what acceptable for you? What almost all the ulama agreed to is the hands and the face. And the face especially expresses about the beauty of the girl. And of course, it will tell you about the, the complexion and In the, the presence color. of their parents. Yeah. Uh, no, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Uh, outside, in, in a way or another, that you can, uh, you know, uh, seize an opportunity to look at her. So it's not haram to fall? No, but only, like, you know, uh, Muhammad ibn Maslamah, may Allah be pleased with him once, was hiding in one of the gardens to look at a girl. So somebody said to him that you do that while you are the companion of the Prophet mm -hmm. It's like shame on you. He said, well, why not? Since I've heard the Prophet mm -hmm. is saying that if one have already made up his mind, and this is a very important condition, mm -hmm. okay? You made your choice. You just need to confirm that is the right choice by uh, examining the beauty of the girl, okay? without approaching her family and making an official uh, meeting and so on. You can look at her face. So the Prophet ﷺ said, words. look at her if mm. you have already made up your mind. And when one of the companions got married, without looking, he said, did you look at her? He said, no. He said, no, go back and look okay. at her. Yeah. You got to make sure what you get into. So that keeps balance between the importance of, uh, you know, keeps balance between the fact that beauty is a considered mm -hmm. factor. And the importance of giving the priority to the religious commitment. Yeah, what about men who wants to know more uh, details about the woman that he wants to marry? Well, actually, he could do two things. He could have his mom or his sister go have tea with her and her family, and then he could find out more about her. You mean high tea? Like <laughs> yeah, you know, go over there, have a cup of coffee, and bring a sandwich for her, you know, some cake. 
yeah. and then they see everything about her. Do his father have to have be present like that? Well, any mahram. Yeah. Uh, if the person is present with a girl, there has to be a mahram. But if his mom goes over there, that's a woman no, and fine. a woman. He doesn't need a mahram. No. Uh, you know, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also uh, added to us some other qualities which are very, very important in selecting uh, your life mate, which is, he said, تزوج الولود الودود Marry one who is uh, able to bear children and give birth mm -hmm. and loving and caring. And I understand that you're going to ask, and how would you know that? That inshallah will answer next time. Inshallah. <laughs> okay. Subhanakallah wa alhamdulillah. wa natubu.